Hey guys, Brandon Boyd here. I wanted to go over the perfect three-way call. It's set up just like this in this diagram. This is third-party calling and notification. So you have yourself in blue. You have your prospect who's in green. Now that could be a warm contact. It could be a cold contact. This is where you have trust and even friendship in this case. Now from your prospect to expert who's in red, this is where there's respect in edification. See this this individual who might be your upline, it could be your mentor, your business partner. This individual is successful, knowledgeable, and helpful. They're the person that is going to help you to bring that prospect into your business. And a lot of people don't know how powerful the third party validation is. You know, it goes all the way back to a prophet is not accepted in their own land. People need to hear it from somebody else. People need to hear it from someone who has credibility, is making money, and can answer the questions. Because in the meantime, a person is going to say, how long have you been in? How much money are you making? And I'll wait and see how you do. So this is how it works. The first thing is, not every prospect needs or deserves a three-way call. Okay, sometimes people say, yes, I've got a live body. I've got one. And they want to put them on a three-way call. You want to make sure and don't do that. This person better deserve a three-way call. They better be qualified. And that's the key. The higher quality of the prospect, the more likely that you should use a three-way call. So how do you go about qualifying them? This has got to be someone who is sincere. This is someone who really has a determination to change. This is someone who really is open-minded to the opportunity, not just a live body on the phone that you can stick on uh, to your expert. Okay. So you got to make sure and qualify them. They must earn the right to a three-way call. Okay. If this person is, you know, just skeptical and wanting to beat up the company that you're a part of, that's not a qualified person. Okay. What about if they're cynical, skeptical, or negative? Just like I said, if they're trying to beat up your company, you don't want to get this person on just so that your expert can prove them wrong. Okay. You don't want to waste the time of the expert that you're working with. Also, spend time edifying the upline not the prospect. Sometimes a person will get on the phone, they'll talk about how this prospect they have was an amazing soccer player, they're a great dad, a great husband, they're so great at their job or whatever the case may be. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you edify the upline. The way that you edify the upline is find out what the upline's background is. Find out how successful that they've been both in the business and in life so that you are setting that stage for, wow, this individual is very important, you know, and so the person is going to want to make sure that they are, you know, very attentive and realize this is a, this is a great opportunity uh, to listen. You know, so you can say something like this. I'm going to try and try my best to get my mentor business partner on the phone. He's extremely successful and very busy. Okay, so what this does is it creates powerful positioning. Okay, by saying something like, look, I'm going to try my best. This guy's super busy. He's very successful. And so let me see if I can get a hold of him. So you might call, you might text, whatever it is that you have with your agreement, with your upline. Um, that's what you do. So you want to make sure that it's not, oh, I can get him anytime. This guy's always available. You want to make sure that, hey, this guy, he's he might be in between meetings or presentations. So it creates powerful positioning in doing that. So you might say something like this. If you actually do get a hold of him or her, you say, oh my goodness, I got a hold of Jane or, or Bill. Thank the heavens, he or she is between meetings. So let's hurry and get your questions answered. So that way there's a sense of urgency. You're not just saying they have all the time in the world. They might only have like four or five minutes. Okay. So again, that now the prospect is in there go, wow, okay. This person is very important. This is an expert. They kind of sit up in their chair, right? So now they're they're realizing this is kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity to even talk to somebody like this. Okay. So again, that creates posture. Got to create that posture. So now once you've introduced your prospect to your leader and your leader to your prospect, which you can just do a simple intro. Okay. So you're the person in the middle, you're introducing your prospect, you're introducing your expert. Again, you edify the leader, the expert, not the prospect. You introduce the prospect, but you're not edifying them. Okay. Allow the leader to take over and keep your yapper shut. And the reason why I say this is because a lot of times a leader will be talking and the, uh, the sponsor in the middle will actually interject and they'll say, yeah, this is so awesome. And boy, tax bought, it does this and vacation club and man, the comp plan, 
what you want to do is just keep your yapper shut. Let the leader take over. Again, you want to make sure that you're that you are edifying the leader and letting them talk, and you're just facilitating the call. Okay, so the leader then usually gives, you know, their background, why they chose this company, and any of the things that they would like to share. Now, what are some questions that you should ask as a leader to lead them to join? Okay, so if you're the person, if you're the expert now, and you want to ask some questions, it's it's critical to ask questions because some people, they get on these calls and they just want to tell the person all about the company and how great it is. Well, remember, people's favorite radio station is WIIFM, which is what's in it for me. So you want to make sure that you're asking the prospect questions so that it will lead them to the sale. So the first one, and these are not in any particular order, okay? But you can say something like this. What did you like about what you saw? Notice I didn't say what did you think about what you saw or what questions did you have? See, what you want to do is get them to say positive things. It's like getting yeses over and over. What did you like about what you saw? Okay? And they'll always tell you something that they liked about it. Do you consider yourself a hard worker and self-motivated? Now, don't feel make this feel scripted. Okay? Put your own words in there. But just say, look, do you consider yourself a hard worker and self-motivated? You know, do you feel like that you're a driven person, that you're passionate? You know, ask it like that. If I showed you a way where you could have a lot of success in this business, would you listen? Most people would say yes. See, because they already know that you've already been successful. Now, you as the person that introduced them, maybe you haven't had success yet. So now you're leveraging your leader. So the leader's asking, if I could show you a way where you could have a lot of success in this business, would you listen? Almost every time they say yes. Okay? So again, you're getting yeses out of them. On a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being not interested, and 10 being ready to get started, which number are you? Okay, this is a critical one. This is extremely effective because then you can know exactly where they're at. And they're usually going to tell you the truth. They're going to say, well, you know, I'm a 5 or I'm a 7 because I like what I see, but maybe I've got some more questions. Not a problem. Do you feel you have enough information in order to make a decision so that you can start making money? This is a great question as well because a lot of times they might say, I really like what I saw. I'd like to do some research. I'd like to talk to my spouse or whatever the case may be. So you want it right here. You can know they either have enough information. They've seen a video or they've been to a live event or a webinar or a call. Do you have enough information in order to make a decision? Again, you've got to lead these people. Do you have any other questions or are you ready to get started? Again, see what I've found is that we must lead people. We must lead them because rarely are they just going to raise their hand and say, sign me up. You know, give me the replicated website so I can get going now. People need to be led in life. A lot of times they're not just going to make decisions on something like this. You have to kind of lead them to the sale and help them make that decision that you know and that they really know deep down is probably the best decision to make. They just have some fears of, number one, is this real? And number two, can I do it? Do I have the time? Do I have the ability and skills to actually make this thing work. See, the, those are some of the deep-rooted things. Sometimes they'll say, oh, it's a pyramid scheme. They don't really think that it's a pyramid scheme. What they're really thinking is, is this a legitimate company, and can I actually do it? Can I actually make money? If I were to put in time, can I actually do it? Okay. So, guys, this really is, as a leader, you now have to edify the person that they're going to enroll with as well as the power and strength of your team that they're going to be working with. You want to make them feel like that they're family, that they're part of something. So you got to let them know that you become business partners and that you'll plug them into everything they need to be successful so that they feel at peace about their decision. So again, you now refer them back to the individual who actually set up the call and have them get back in contact with them now, now that they're on get them their information and get them signed up right away if they've made that decision. If they haven't, let's now set up another call if we need to uh, after they've done some research. We might have to do a three-way call again um, if that's the case. But again, you got to make sure that this individual is qualified to do so, that they're sincere and genuine, that they have a desire. And if they do, then you set it up. Again, the key is not to just get anybody on the call with your upline member, these guys and these gals are very busy. And so you want to make sure that you that you posture, that you qualify, 
and that you make sure that these individuals as well are worth the time for your upline leader uh, to speak to them. I believe that as you follow these things, you will have much more uh, effective three-way calls, uh, that your business will grow much faster. And as you duplicate this process to your team and you share these things as well, uh, that your team will grow faster as well, that you'll have more solid people that will come into your business. So if you like this, you can click like, you can tag it, share it with others. Again, this is the perfect three-way call. This is Brandon Boyd signing off.